Hey guys, I wanted to talk about Celestron software CPWI. I put a video before for the CPWI, but I think this is a newer version of CPWI. It has a few additional features. I wanted to talk specifically about the all-star polar alignment using CPWI. Uh, last night, I was actually trying to show the moon, the uh, live moon, that didn't really go well. And I was uh, trying to bring the C14 image for the moon details and the uh, internet kept buffering. I, I'm using like a cable modem and if I use the cable modem, I guess because everyone is using internet these days, I believe the cable modem is not performing the way it is supposed to. So I had to fix that and also I have to, you know, fix a lot of other filters. So that was just a mess. I removed the video anyway. That was uh, a big mess. So anyway, let's go into the CPWI software. So this is a recording that I did when I was playing around with the CPWI software. So this is the first screen that you are going to get when you open the software. So one thing that I wanted to show you guys is if you are using CPWI, the software is going to change the hand controller software. What I mean by that is if you are using, uh, let me show you like sequence generator pro. Okay. So any other software or PhD for that matter, uh, if you are not a, a sequence generator person, if you, even if you are using like a PhD software, right? So I'll show you in both, both occurrences, what's going to happen. So normally what we do is we select the Celestron telescope driver as a driver. If you are using under normal circumstances and if you are not using the CPWI, but if you do end up using the CPWI, you don't want to select the Celestron telescope driver. You wanted to select what we call as CPWI. Okay. So once CPWI software is installed on your machine and if you are using the CPWI software to connect to your mount, then your mount is going to get connected through this one, through the hand controller, you know, the USB behind the hand controller. And once it connects, you won't be able to use the Celestron telescope driver, which is the ASCON driver. You have to use the CPWI driver. Same is true when you are using PHD. When you are using PHD, when you connect, you have to select not the ASCON driver for the Celestron telescope. You have to select the ASCON driver with the CPWI. That's what happens automatically when you install CPWI. That is something that I learned because CPWI seems like it is going to take over uh, your mount. And once it does, it disables the Celestron telescope driver. So you have to sh uh, shift to the CPWI software. Without that, you won't be able to connect to the PhD or Sequence Generator Pro. The other way to do it is you can disconnect from the CPWI. Uh, I have to restart my machine because it is not letting it go even though I disconnected it. And once you restart your machine and don't touch CPWI software, then you should be able to use the Celestron telescope driver. So that is something that is new that CPWI is doing. So just keep that in mind. So anyway, before uh, getting into CPWI, I just wanted to show you the two important things that you need to take care if you are planning to use the CPWI software. Okay. So going back to the recording. So this is, I started CPWI on my machine. What I was trying to do is trying to connect first. Okay. So when you start, when you say connect into the hand controller. 
Okay, so I'm going to the hand controller. It automatically connects and it actually brings your location based on your network. You can actually go and fix the location if the location is not correct. Okay, so you have an option of manual alignment, quick alignment. I selected quick alignment first and when I selected it, it asked me to move the mount to the home position and I did. So once the mount moves to the home position, it says alignment is complete because I chose the quick align because it's not looking at any stars, right? So when that happens, the mount is right now pointed north towards Polaris. And if you go to the view pointing model, it doesn't show any pointing model at all because you have not selected any stars, right? You cannot perform ASPA because you haven't selected any stars. The all star polar alignment you can do with quick align. So the way you do is you have to delete the alignment. And now it says scope is not aligned. And when you click on perform alignment, you select manual alignment. Now it sends the mount back to the home position again. Now it actually shows on the screen like all the stars that you need to select, right? At least six stars, I believe, you have to select as part of this. So I try to go to a star first. And when you go to the star, the mount actually tries to go to that star. And if you're using any live software with your camera, like in my case, I'm using SharpCap, it, it didn't actually go. Uh, I'll f fast forward a little bit. So it didn't really go. I tried manually using the hand controller to move using the red dot finder to the star and the hand controller is not working because CPWI software takes over the hand controller as well. So you have to use, you know, the key on the mount, on the, the key on the uh, software, you know, the hand controller keys on the software. You can't use the manual hand controller anymore. It's pretty difficult actually looking at the computer and I mean if you don't have a tablet and if you're using like a PC when the telescope is pointing to the star particularly with the red dot trying to move the mouse with one hand is like really difficult uh, probably a, a touchpad or a or something like you know that you can hold in your hand would would have been much helpful but if you just have like a laptop or a PC, you can't control this at all because you have to click on these buttons when you are actually physically there at the telescope looking at the red dot finder. It was quite impossible. And that star that I selected, it actually, uh, I don't know how to say this, the co cap, it didn't go there. So I have to switch over, I'm fast forwarding it. So I moved to a much brighter star like Vega, okay. So now the mount is going to Vega. Let me show you that real. So when it goes to Vega again, it actually did not bring the Vega star in the live view as well. So I ended up actually like moving the telescope using the keypad here and you have to move this window to the side that way you can see both windows the live view window as well as the key window this key doesn't come out of the software you have to move the entire CPWI software and it was quite difficult as you notice I would definitely use a touchpad 
for this one because it was using the mouse it was kind of difficult and finally I was able to bring I'm using C14 here so the star is like super bright this is Vega so I was able to align to the middle so once that is done you have to select I think uh, let me go back a little so you have to click on that button centered right so when you when you do that it will ask you to select another star so you have to keep doing this like for six stars okay I'll fast forward it so I did six stars here and this process took almost like 30 to 40 minutes because the time it is taking of course in between I was doing some focusing as you can see it so I did six stars here and when I completed it it said I'll stop here for a second alignment complete you may add more alignment references at any point your polar alignment could be improved would you like to perform an all-star polar alignment okay if you say yes then basically it will show you the error message here saying that this is how much the error is so I was kind of wondering rather than going to let me go back a second here if you see this message here okay so if you see this message here Initially, I was thinking since the error message is live anyway, like it is showing west and south, I was thinking to fix the alt as, uh, alt, uh, I was trying to fix the knobs on the mount to fix this error rather than doing it any other, any other way. But I thought it may not be right. So the software recommends, however, not to use like these numbers to adjust the mount it will ask you to press next button and when you press next i hope it is moving yeah it says select a target by clicking the object in the sky viewer so i selected vega again and when you say go to vega because you completed the six star alignment definitely the software is going to go to vega and keep the star in the center so right now it is going to vega and i may have to fast forward this one yeah okay so once it goes to vega it shows the star in your live view software in the middle okay it does show that so at this point it will say that center vega in your ips click centered when complete obviously it is in the center so you can actually make smaller corrections if you wanted to reduce the rate if it shows, if, if the star is being shown in the live view software, it's actually very easy to control. The trouble that you get into is when, uh, actually I was uh, explaining why this is going on, hold on. So let me go back here. So when you adjust this one, when you click on the center, right, when it is done, Okay, the mount is now adjusting its position to account for the polar alignment error. So adjust the polar alignment knobs until the star is centered within the scope, right? So you have to now uh, keep your, you know, laptop or screen visible to you while you are actually adjusting the knobs, okay? That is not that difficult because uh, you can easily see that through your IPs and you can adjust it. So that took a little while. 
and finally I was able to get the star in the middle. So that that right now I'm adjusting the manually the knobs, right? Once that is done, uh, I'm I don't want to fast forward here. Uh, give me one second. So when you are done and if you are right, it says complete. That's it. The only problem that I had here was when I ask it to go to. I believe I don't know if I went back to Vega or I went to. Arcutrus. I don't know which star I went to. So I think I went to Arcutrus. Okay. So when I say go to, even though you did a star alignment, because you change the knobs on your mount, Arcutrus doesn't really show up exactly in the middle. Okay. So you see that. It passed the star, okay. So there, I believe the mount already went to that because it is showing like, like one or two stars here, but there is no arcutrus here. So you actually lose the polar, the star alignment that you did before. So you have to repeat your star alignment or you can actually go to Vega because that's the one that you used for your uh, polar alignment and you can sync the mount to Vega that's what I did so now it is going back to Vega And once it goes to Vega, because this is the star that you used for your all-star polar alignment, Vega will be in the center. So at this point, you can actually sync on the object. Okay. So that's what I did. Uh, that's I don't I haven't got chance to try this more. I'll show you guys more videos once I get a chance to play around with this software. I hope this gives you an idea how to work with all star polar alignment. I do believe that you may have to redo the polar, redo the star alignment after you are done with your polar alignment because you lose the polar alignment completely if you are trying to use this software. So I'll test this a little bit more, update you all later. Thank you for watching.